Hello guys, in this video I will show you how you can play audio inside of a Docker container. If you're interested how to run Linux and Windows GUI applications inside of a Docker container and display the GUI on your host machine, then you can check out my previous video, the link should be somewhere up there or down in the description. In the description are all the necessary links as well as the timestamps so you can skip any part of this video. In this video I prepared two docker files, we will build the image from scratch, then we will run the container and we will try to play some audio inside. In the mentioned previous video I showed you how you can display the GUI of the application that is running inside of the container and therefore I used an X server on my Windows machine. It's similar with audio but instead of an X server you need an pulse audio server that is running on your host machine. Windows doesn't have a pulse audio server built in and therefore we will need to download a third party server. On this website, that's also down in the description, you can find a Pulse Audio server. This is the one we will use, so go to Download, and then down here, Windows Support, and download the zip file. I downloaded Pulse Audio, I extracted the zip file inside of my Visual Studio Code folder, here it is. Now let's see what is inside. We have the bin folder, and in here we have the Pulse Audio EXE, so this is the server that we need to run. But before we run it, we need to configure it. In there, you should also find an etc folder. Inside is the pools folder and then inside you have different configurations. We are interested in the default.pa file. So open this one. In here, scroll down till the end until you see network access. And here we will comment this line back in and we will add listen equals to 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 and auth anonymous equals 1. This will configure the Pulse Audio server to listen to any client to any IP address. And that's what we want. We want to connect from the container to the host system where the Pulse Audio server is running so the audio gets played on the host system. Now save the file. This is the minimum that we need to configure. Now let's start the Pulse Audio server. And we will start it from the terminal. So go to terminal, new terminal from PowerShell. So as you can see, Pulse Audio is inside this folder. So let's start the server. It's inside the Pulse Audio folder, bin folder, pulseaudio.exe. And we will disable the use PID file equals false because we don't want to generate PID files and a dash D option. With this one, Pulse Audio will run in the background. So let's start, enter. Since we configured Pulse Audio to listen to any port and any IP address, we need to allow access. So allow. All right, Pulse Audio is running in the background, so we can just close this terminal. We don't need this anymore. And now let's take a look at the first Docker file. This is the Docker file. It's Alpine based. And as you can see, it's very small. So this will be quick. Here I'm installing the Bash shell. I'm installing Pulse Audio and the also utils and plugins. And then the most important thing, I'm setting the Pulse server environment variable to host.docker.internal. And this will be resolved to the IP address of my Windows host system. With this, the container will connect to my Windows host where the Pulse Audio server is running and the audio will get played on my Windows system. And then I'm just starting the bash shell and that's it. So let's try to build this image. Go to terminal, new terminal. Make sure you're in the right folder and write docker build dash f the name of the docker file in my case this is docker file dash alpine dash audio then dash t the name of the image i'll call it docker dash audio and i dot for the current folder and enter build the image is ready here it is in docker desktop with 52 megabytes pulse audio server is running so we can start the container we could start it here, but I will start it here in Visual Studio Code in PowerShell. In PowerShell, write docker run dash it because we want an interactive console right here in the terminal. Then dash v and I want to map this folder right here. Right click to copy and here right click to paste and a colon. And I want to map this folder to the slash app folder inside of the container. So with this, I should be able to access the content from this folder from inside of the container. Then the name of the image, it's docker-audio. And the command we want to start, I want to start the bash shell. That's it. Enter. Run. Container is running and we are connected. You can also see it here in Docker desktop. Here is the container. 
the container should already be connected to the Pulse audio server that we previously started on Windows. Let's try to run a simple speaker test just to see if everything is working. Let's try it out. Enter. It's working, alright. Alright, we have audio. That's awesome. Let's try to play some audio files. In this folder I have two mp3 files. Let's see if the folder is mapped properly. ls all. It should be mapped to the app folder. Yes, here they are. In order to play an mp3 file you will need to install another tool and I will do it here. So apk add and the tool is called socks and I will also add it here to the docker file. Let's install it, enter. Socks is installed so let's try to play one of those mp3 files. The command is play and the path to the file. Let's try docker ubuntu mp3 first and play. Hello guys, in this video I will show you how you can run a full Ubuntu desktop in a Linux container on Windows and also display the full desktop on Windows. This audio is from one of my previous videos, so if you want to know how to run a full Ubuntu desktop, the link is up there or down in the description. Let's talk about this SOX tool. You can think about SOX like FFmpeg for audio. FFmpeg is for video and SOX is for audio. You can do a lot of stuff with SOX. For instance, you can convert an audio file from one format to another. Let's clear the terminal. And now let's say we want to convert this mp3 file to a WAV file. It is as simple as writing SOX, then the input file with this one, and then the output file will have the same name and a WAV extension. SOX will now automatically detect the format based on the extension and also detect the output format based on this extension right here. So let's convert, enter, done, and here it is. The conversion was performed inside of the container because the container is still running and we are locked in. And since this folder is mapped to the container, we can also manipulate files inside of it. Another thing that SOX can do, it can also trim audio files. So let's say I want to skip the first two seconds of the file and only keep the next five seconds. Let's see how we can do this. I will use the previous command. And here instead the input file will be this new generated wave file. And the output file, I'll call it output1.wave. I want to trim the first two seconds and then keep the next five seconds. And just ignore the rest. Let's try this out. Done. Here is the output file. It should be only five seconds long. And now to make things more interesting, let's also add a fade effect on top of it. So same thing. This time the input file should be the previously created output 1 and the output file should be output 2. The effect will be fade. Let's say I want to fade in the first second, write 1. And then you can specify how long the whole audio should be. If you want that it just takes the whole file, then go with 0. And then I want the last 2 seconds to be faded out, so go with 2. This one will take the whole file, it will fade in the first second and fade out the last 2 seconds. Let's try. Here it is. And now let's play it. Play app output 2.wave. Let's hear it. Full Ubuntu desktop in a Linux container on Windows and also display the full. This is it. Socks is a very powerful tool if you want to manipulate audio files. You can automate audio processing, include it into your scripts. I can only recommend it to check it out. If you don't want to use an Alpine based image, I have also prepared an Ubuntu based image. I'm basically doing the same stuff here, installing the Bash Shell, Pulse Audio, Alsa Utils and SOX. And the same thing with the Pulse Server Environment Variable, I'm setting it to host.docker.internal. Like in the previous one, this will be resolved to the IP address of the host system. Starting the Bash Shell and that's it. The Docker files and all the links are down in the description if you want to check it out. And that's it for this video, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, if you like my content, then give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. I really appreciate it, it makes the channel grow. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.